So you finished Rhythm of War, you read the epilogue, and you could not believe such a thing could happen in this series. Your mind is completely blown. But days pass, weeks pass, you think about it more, and you start to question, did that happen exactly how I thought it did? Or have I been misdirected slightly? Stay tuned in this video, we're going to get to the bottom of it. Hey guys, it's Christian from Lost in Discovery. So good to see you guys again. Before we start the video, I want to personally thank all of you for helping me get to 5,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel. I never thought we'd get here so fast, if at all. Thank you, each and every one of you, for popping in and joining me on this fantastic hobby that I've picked up and hopefully we can grow it into something more. To celebrate, I'm gonna go live tomorrow and chat with you guys. I'll leave the exact times and all things like that on my Twitter and on my community posts on YouTube, so check those out if you would like to join. All right, getting into the video. So every epilogue in the Stormlight Archive has given us a scene with Wit. Wit is also known as Hoyd and shows up in every single Cosmian story that Brandon has written. Each epilogue gives us a little nugget of some epic moment that is going to lead to more in the Cosmere or just in the Stormlight Archive. You probably remember reading The Way of Kings and Wit was waiting there at the gates of Kolinar where Talon the Herald came back after 4,000 years of torture announcing the next desolation. When I first read that I had no idea what the hell was going on but I knew it was epic. Then in Words of Radiance we got the return of Yasna. We thought she was dead. Brandon had us on that string for so long and right at the end, Wit meets her and off begins their amazing relationship that continues to grow in the series. At the end of Oathbringer, we follow Wit at the end of the Battle of Thalen Field and he bonds a Spren for what seems like the very first time and we meet the cryptic Spren design who has become a fan favourite and a perfect counterpart to Wit whilst on Rosha. Then we get to this thick floppy bastard and the end of this book is probably the most impactful epilogue out of the four in my personal opinion mainly because it's given me so much to ruminate on so much to think about and it has created a great fan discussion that is happening in small doses but i don't think it's happening enough and i'm here to bring it to the forefront so let's break down this epilogue but first let's just talk about what happened in a very plain summary so at the end of the book, Wit makes his way down to the Pinnacle. And if you don't remember, the Pinnacle is where King Elica's palace was at the Shattered Plains. Wit has gone there because he knows that Odium would not be able to contact or find him up at Urethiru and he knows they are going to have a little chat. As he's walking through King Elica's palace, he is doing some coin tricks, and it's kind of funny because coins don't exist on Rosha, they use gems for currency, so it's just a classic wit scene. He's explaining why misdirection is so important and why it's more impressive to use actual sleight of hand magic as opposed to light weaving and things like that. Design, his cryptic spread just does not get it, and it's a good time. There are also some corrupted spren watching who are who are his audience. From there, design starts annoying the corrupted spren. They go off, and in comes Taravodium, Todium, Taravi, Taravangian, Odium, X rays, Killer, Nightblood, dude. He comes in. This is where they start to have a chat. Wit is very flamboyant as usual, greets Odium as Raze. If you don't know, Raze was the old vessel of Odium, the old person who was Odium before the Taravangian killed him. They start to have a chat about this contest of champions that's going to happen in 10 days. We assume that Wit knew Odium was going to talk to him because he had a hand in writing the contract of how this was going to take place and Taravodium seems a bit angry and a bit emotionally unstable but nothing's new there. They basically have a chat about what's going to go down and how Odium's gonna win and blah blah blah. Classic evil villain stuff. Where it gets interesting is that Tyrangian slips that he knows that thousand year old entities can be fooled over time. He knows from personal experience. This is when it seems that Wit gets quite freaked out 
and says like, who are you? Who, who is this person? And Tara Rangin starts to see that wit has stored memories using breath. Now, if you're not familiar with it, breath is another magic system from the world of Warbreaker. Think of it as a similar counterpart to Stormlight where you can invest it in yourself or you can use it to enhance your abilities or objects. But this is the first instance, as far as I'm concerned, that you can use breath to store memories. Tara Rangin comments that being thousands of years old, Wit naturally would have had to store his memories somewhere, otherwise he's going to go bloody crazy. And we've seen that happen to the Heralds, who are like 4,000-ish years old, and they're all, they should all be locked up, basically. Obviously, Hoyt is very forward-thinking, and he has taken care of this issue for himself. Taravangin starts to think to himself, hmm, I can't hurt you directly, but I can, yeah, I can mess with these memories. And at this point, the scene starts all over again. Wit has seemingly lost his memories. He's quite disorientated and Odium arrives again and we do the whole conversation more or less and both parties leave quite satisfied. Odium slash Taravangian seemingly has used his powers, has messed up one of his biggest competitors and Wit thinks to himself his first meeting up with Odium in a thousand years went exactly as planned. And that's the line. That's the line that made me question everything. Let's rewind just like this chapter is and go through it again, but with a more keen eye for detail. And I'm going to give you, hopefully, enough to make you question if it was actually Taravangian who tricked Wit. Let's see if I can do that. Okay, so there's a lot of subtext going on in this chapter. First of all, the first half of it is Wit explaining to Design, but really explaining to the reader why sleight of hand is so important and why it is more impressive than using the magic from Stormlight to trick people. It's because people know it's a lie. People engage with it. They give you their trust. They follow it along and they know they have a chance of figuring it out. Is that reminding you of anything that we're doing right now? Yeah, this is where it gets more interesting. He starts to tell his friend Design that everyone knows this is fake, but that's what makes it so good because you wonder how they've pulled it off. It's, to me it seems obvious, but okay, let's keep going. All right, so following on from that point, when we're in Wit's head, he does seem genuinely scared when Taravangian starts to flaunt his powers and starts to kind of give away that this is not Raze who is o Odium anymore, this is Taravangian, this is this is Todium, right? <laughs> That's where there are some doubts because would Hoyd go as far as to think that he is afraid and all this because he knows that Odium can get inside his head and see this? I think there's some doubt there, but don't worry, I have more convincing parts for you coming up. Where I start to think we get some evidence that Hoyd was actually in on it and knew that Tyra Banshee was going to try and mess with him is when we see how the conversation played the second time around. So if you look at the two paragraphs, oh my god, I feel like we're getting like some CSI level stuff right here. If you look at the two paragraphs from the first version of their conversation to the second version, there are minor differences and the one that I find the most interesting is how Wit chooses to skip ahead as if he already knew what the rest of his paragraph or sentence was going to be but just skipped to keep this conversation rolling. And it's this part where I thought, hmm, did Wit already know what he previously said a minute ago and he's just skipping ahead? Now looking at those two paragraphs, if you were put in a situation where your memory was wiped and someone said one thing to you, would you say it exactly the same to the word? Does it actually work like that? Wit has said it the exact same and then has taken a pause, said anyway, and skipped to the end of it. I don't know, that seems fishy to me. Where it gets really interesting is at the end of this chapter where Wit goes to whistle, but he can't hit the perfect pitch that he used to have. Now, if you've read Warbreaker, you know that having a certain amount of breaths gives you perfect pitch and Wit has flaunted this throughout many of his appearances in the Cosmere. 
He goes to whistle a tune like he's won the day against Odium, but he can't find the notes correctly. We know that Odium took his breaths that were storing memories, but did he take enough actual breaths that Hoyd was using at the time to take away his perfect pitch? We know it doesn't take that many breaths to have perfect pitch, so this creates some doubt in my head and my god is this video getting damn nerdy, oh my god. Alright, now we get to the final lines where I start to get even more doubt with this chapter. Odium's presence had remained behind. Was something wrong? Don't trouble yourself, he thought. This is working. After all, Wit's first face-to-face -face meeting with Odium in over a thousand years had gone exactly as he had imagined. Okay. The legend Brandon Sanderson. We know and love him. We read all of his works, at least in Stormlight if you're watching this. This guy has surprised us with twists and turns and amazing moments. Do you think he would have a chapter like this and have it happen as plain as day that Odium just took the stuff and went away, especially with a final line like that? Come on, there's more to it. There has to be, there has to be. The doubt comes in with when we're reading from his perspective, we see how genuinely terrified he was. But was he terrified because of what Odium was capable of doing or the fact that he had predicted this and was right that Tara V would be Todium and have this power. It's hard to say, that starts to feel like we're grasping at straws. At least he knew that he had to be careful and perhaps he had had these breaths available and seen to Odium to kind of call his bluff, to have some ones that were disposable. Another one that creates doubt in my mind is that wouldn't Wit be immediately aware if his breaths were taken to take away his perfect pitch? Someone like Hoyt would know exactly the consequences of this and, exact and could put the pieces together of how this happened. If anything, he's lost the memory of the previous conversation and that's it, because he still seems snappy as ever. He's just lost perfect pitch. I don't know, I feel like Hoyt would be so onto this straight away. And I think he's absolutely, well, no, I'm not going to say it. I'm just going to present the side that maybe, just maybe, he has played Todium here. I really think he has. And it's unclear to say, but I'm putting it forth that there is enough doubt here that if it comes out that Wit had these breaths ready to go, played the whole I've lost my memory thing, I would buy it and I would not be shocked in the slightest. I've just given you the facts to think about. If you completely disagree, which I'm sure many of you do, feel free to let me know. This was just a fun video that I wanted to make and just discuss the ending of this book because I wasn't seeing enough discussion about it. Let's hash it out down in the comments. Maybe it's as simple that Tara Vangin outsmarted Wit in his new role, his new shiny role as Odium. Or I think personally it would be way more interesting if Hoyd once again impresses us by calling someone's bluff and being ready for the situation. I guess we'll have to wait till book five to find out. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this lighter tone video and I'll see you guys all in the live stream coming up very soon on the channel. See you guys soon. Hope you're all well.